Yeah, please go ahead. Three o'clock. If it is three o'clock, you go ahead. Yes, sir. Yes, three o'clock. Good day, everyone. So, a couple of weeks back, we got a news from the northern part of India that 120 people in a single day struck by lightning, which is very unprecedented. And uh, there we have seen a huge swarm of uh, locusts from Africa to India. They are swarming up and eating up all the greens, the trees, crops, everything, whatever they come across are being devoured by them. Also, two days back, uh, World Health Organization and the uh, uh, Food and Agriculture Organization, they released a, a report that uh, per day, about 12,000 people are going to die because of hunger during this pandemic period. And the pandemic itself is attributed to the habitat loss. These all contribute to the human-induced climate change. These are all the side effects of 
human induced climate change. At this outset, so the Centers of College has organized an international webinar on the impact of climate change on biodiversity and the world food security. So there are over uh, uh, 30 uh, participants from 30 countries all over the world. Uh, so in this venture, I uh, uh, refer uh, can you get us, huh? The Bible says it's a good thing to give thanks to the Lord. Amen. Greetings in his holy name. Uh, biodiversity is critical for safeguarding louder, louder, louder. security, underpinning healthy and nutritious diets, improving rural livelihoods, and enhancing the resilience of people and communities. FAO of Farmer Director General Jose Gracinio de Silva said in a statement Less biodiversity means that plants and animals are more vulnerable to pests and diseases. Compounded by our reliance on fewer and fewer species to feed ourselves, the increasing loss of biodiversity for food and agriculture puts food security and nutrition at risk. Very good evening to all of you. The Department of Botany is organizing a momentous webinar lecture today on climate change, on biodiversity and world food security, which provides a platform to understand the consequences related to the topic and mesh with the subject expert. Nurturing creativity and inspiring innovation are two of the key elements of a successful education. Reverend Dr. M. Arakasami Xavier, SJ, our beloved principal of this great institution of Temple of Learning, are the perfect amalgamation of both. His harness and creative energies of the academic community and distill the essence of their inspired motivation is the most brilliant way of possible to reach this institution in a greater heights. Hence, I am delighted to welcome you, Father, on behalf of the department and the part participants. Welcome you, Father. Thank you. Dr. Wafa Mehras Amer, Professor of Botany, Faculty of Science, University of... ...and well-experienced in the field of plant biodiversity and taxonomy. She will be introduced by Dr. Francis Satya Silan in detail soon. 
on behalf of the college management and botany department i extend my hearty welcome to the speaker professor wafa makra summer special note of welcome to dr sagay sadis dean of biological sciences the organizer of the webinar dr francis satya seelan our department colleagues and dr kanik raj in a special way finally i welcome all the webinar participants of various institutions from different parts of the country and abroad i welcome you one and all thank you Thank you, sir. Thank you. 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 Dr. Satish, dear and beloved, Dr. Sendil, uh, the HOD of Botany, the organizing secretary, Dr. Yam Francis Satish Silan of the Botany Department, and other professors, and my dear guests and friends, good afternoon to you all. I am very happy to be associated with this international webinar. on the impact of climate change on biodiversity and world food security i am really very happy that the department of botany is organizing such a wonderful webinar for the benefit of the academia intellectuals and also the students as you all know the department of botany is one of the oldest departments in st joseph's college which has brought lot of laurels to our college and during this lockdown period it has organized number of webinars e conferences i am very proud of them now today we are here to listen to madam on impact of climate change on biodiversity and world food security as you all know these three themes are interrelated as we all aware of the climate changes which are happening around us in the world and surely they affect us on all aspects not only us particularly from the point of view of food the livelihood security livelihood issues and food security issues also very importantly it, the biodiversity is affected very much by the climate change which we are seeing which we are experiencing every day every day so it is a wonderful theme and it's a timely theme it is very much needed of the hour now our honorable resource person is going to enlighten us by her thought provoking speech by her lecture and surely all of you all of us will be enlightened by her insight insightful thoughts and her ideas she is here to enlighten us and we are here to listen to you madam and I, uh, on behalf of the management once again i welcome you for this this seminar webinar and once again i welcome all the learned participants to take part fully in this webinar once again i would like to congratulate and appreciate the department of botany and the organizer for organizing such a meaningful webinar for our students scholars and learned participants across the world thank you very much may god bless us and wish you all the best thank you for thank you for your warm words and your constant encouragement has made us uh, achieve a lot of things so with this uh, may i request the organizing secretary uh, dr m francis satishil uh, to uh, introduce the chief guest of the day uh, so, thank you janik ma for making a very good mc i uh, thank you father eminent uh, eminent faculty members and my dear participants I'm honored here to have Dr. Wafa M. Amir in Amis, 
first of all i thank her for accepting our invitation and gracing this occasion sparing a valuable time and outstanding ad address which she is about to deliver shortly she has an enriched profile let me brief on it regarding her professional research positions dr wafa is graduated with the honor degree in 1982 from kaira university egypt and doctorate in plant science specialized in flora and taxonomy in 1995 from kaira university in cooperation with eastern london university england she started her career as an assistant lecturer in 1988 and promoted as a professor of plant science in 2005 She has held various prestigious academic as well as administrative positions, like member of IUCN, Deputy Arab Federation for Wildlife Protection, League of Arab States, Biodiversity and Environmental Expert for Arab Organization of Agriculture Development, League of Arab States. Moreover, she is former director of Nature Conservation Sector, Egyptian Environmental Affairs Agency, and former. head of the department of botany and microbiology farm manager of quality assurance unit faculty of science former manager of manager of science heritage center kaira university dr wafa is a regional peer reviewer in higher education institutions currently dr wafa is serving as a and microbiology department faculty of science kaira university and she is the curator of kaira university herbarium Uh, area of interest in biosystematic studies in crop wild relatives and potential plant species in egypt conservation of the wild genetic resources and it is related methodology legislations and property rights environmental impacts of the current genetic resources and its future potentialities especially the crop related species within the egyptian borders dr wafa is a renowned personality with more than 100 scientific papers in various national and international journals of repute with high impact factor she has authored nine scientific books she has guided more than 10 phd scholars she is an expert and team leader in various applied scientific and environmental projects she is a biodiversity expert and consultant of ecological related issues dr wafa is an active member of various professional bodies and a member of 10 government organizations and a couple of non government organizations further she is a recipient of various prestigious awards i don't have a time to list it out i just a brief but listing of her scientific achievements go on go on go on i consider it's a great honor to welcome such an eminent personality on my own behalf and behalf of my college i offer you a cheerful welcome ma'am with this small introduction i offer this session over to dr wafa our guest speaker thank you hello good morning yeah yes madam are you hearing me Yeah, yeah, we are able to hear. Yeah, you. good morning, good morning, after uh, good morning and afternoon, all uh, dear participants. Thank you very much for the administrative staff in uh, San Joseph uh, College. Thank you as well to the botany department staff uh, for organizing uh, this webinar, especially Dr. Francis, who is always contacting me during the organization uh, uh, among his uh, uh, assistant and colleagues. Uh, now, a special thank you also to Dr. Uh, Tricina from Shedembram uh, 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 College. Uh, 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 she, she, she is a, a source or the reason of our uh, collaboration. Uh, today, we are speaking about uh, the webinar, the impact of climate change on biodiversity and the world food security. First of all, I am Wafa Amir from Cairo University. Let us introduce just uh, two statements about Cairo University. Cairo University is an educational and research institution, uh, uh, including uh, uh, 25 uh, uh, colleges and institutes. Uh, it graduates uh, more than 150 uh, graduates per uh, year. 
uh, it established 1908 uh, at the time as a pioneer uh, 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 university along uh, uh, all the continent, all the African continent. In the same time, uh, the uh, Faculty of Science Cairo University established uh, Cairo University uh, with a uh, lot of uh, around uh, uh, 300 uh, uh, discipline, research and educational uh, disciplines. But Faculty of Science including uh, 10 departments, uh, one of them is my department, Botany and Microbiology Department. Now we will uh, speak about the impact of climate change on biodiversity and the world food security. Let us first of all to speak about why we are speaking now about the climate change. The climate change is not a new phenomenon. It occurs from the historic time, along the historic time, uh, since uh, more than 500 million ago. Uh, sometimes, uh, as you see in this uh, uh, slide, some uh, uh, microorganisms or living organisms appear and disappear at the same time in consecutive issue up till, uh, up till 2 million uh, Two and five million years ago, when 2.5 million ago, uh, when the uh, person or the humankind uh, appeared. So, if it is, if the climate change is a normal issue and it is already so it's already done uh, and uh, through the geologic air uh, since all these millions of years or so through the geologic time. What is the new issue? Why the world now started to uh, have interest on climate change? Because the climate change started recently or in recent decade started to be more accelerated. Uh, this acceleration is mainly due to the anthropogenic factors, mainly deforestation and fossil fuel consumption. If we are so, some one of them is the deforestation. If we look as a for uh, uh, general uh, feature of the world forest, the world forest distribution, just in a five year from 2010 to 2015, uh, around 32 million hectares of the world forest disappear. What is the meaning of this? The meaning of this is each one occur uh, from this forest absorb 2.6 tons of the carbon dioxide per year. So if we, we lost uh, through the five year, uh, just uh, uh, 32 million hectares, so we lost uh, the absorb absorption pump of the huge amount of carbon dioxide. And if we are dealing with the carbon dioxide, the global carbon dioxide emission uh, from the fuel, fuel consumption or use is amounted uh, 40 billion ton of carbon dioxide based on the 2014 uh, uh, scale. And this amount is 60% above the emission in 1990. And as you know, 1990 is the Kyoto Protocol uh, benchmark of, or Kyoto Protocol uh, limit. Uh, climate change is not affecting, of course, uh, similarly on all the parts of the world. Some areas is more affected than another or more variable is, uh, vulnerable to climate change than another. So the arid region uh, or the arid resort, uh, desert around the globe more affected uh, or more vulnerable, followed by the polar region, region which is the, uh, the second uh, affected uh, region with the climate change. There is a different features of climate change. However, some of these climate change are more affecting on biodiversity as well as the food production. As example, uh, of these uh, factors is the extreme weather. The extreme weather meaning the hot, uh, meaning the hot uh, 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 days and the heat waves, a fewer cold days. 
increasing greenhouse concentration like carbon dioxide, nitrogen, methane, and sulfur. And we will give examples for the effect of these issues later. The sea level rise and the ocean acidity as well as the water cycle change. The water cycle change containing a different items, among of them the, rain, the change in rainfall timing, the change in quantity of this rainfall, the change in rainfall distribution, as well as rain duration. So we can summarize uh, uh, the threats uh, or the extreme weather threats which are affecting the biodiversity in more or less uh, 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 statement. Uh, high maximum temperature, meaning is a high pressed. And the high pressed, this is meaning some days show with uh, extremely high temperature. And after this, after this uh, uh, heat burst, the, the temperature decline again. So the plant and the living organisms are suffering from this extreme. Some days very hot and extraordinary temperature, and the uh, uh, second days which become decline again. And the heat waves, fewer cold days over uh, the most of the land areas, more severe drought cycles, dry areas, tend to be get more drier and the wet areas will get more wetter. So, for example, about the extreme weather event. The extreme weather event like uh, a climatic oscillation in the United States, if we are going to just have, uh, uh, one city like Arizona, we can see the coldest winter uh, uh, along the uh, last decade happened last year. It is the coldest winter with a huge amount of ice. In the same region, in the, uh, in the same year as well, the hottest summer with the most hot high temperature and the driest summer with dust. And uh, cultivated or wild inhabited such area it must combat or must living with or adapt themselves with a very cold climate and very hot uh, uh, climate in the same year. Uh, and this is the most uh, uh, vulnerable, vulnerable to the climate, the biodiversity or the living species. It's not only Arizona. Another example from California, the high temperature days leading to increase in annual burned forest area by 400%. So the burned area increased 400% during the last five decades only, from 1972 up to 2018. So this is a huge amount of burned area due to burned area due to the increase in temperature as well. As we see. So, what is the impact on biodiversity? I guess the most impact on biodiversity is the shifting in timing of biological process. But let us see what is what is the meaning of timing of biological process. Timing of biological process is the time of flowering for in plants, time, for example, for setting fruits, time for uh, pollination, time for emergence of new buds, and so on and so on. In animals uh, like bird, uh, 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 the timing for bird, migra bird migration, uh, the time for uh, laying eggs, for each, uh, uh, hatching eggs, and so on and so on. All this issue is called uh, uh, physiological or biological activities. All these biological activities recently it changed in timing. So the, this seasonal timing of such biological activities uh, it changed, it's become shifted from 15 up to months uh, or 30 days earlier than the decade uh, ago. Other example in uh, one is one of the major uh, uh, overview uh, on the example on aquatic environment. Uh, as you see, the climate change affecting on uh, physical, chemical, and geomorphology of uh, the water or the aquatic environment. Among the physical changes is the sea surface temperature, the ocean circulation, the waves, the waves, the storms, system, 
of course, the storm direction and strength as well. The chemical exchanges like uh, salinity, uh, uh, salinity content, oxygen concentration, and acidification. And also in water, geomorphology. Geomorphology meaning the rise in the sea level, which is written the coastal aquaculture production in river deltas and bays. As example of acidification, acidification of the ocean or the ocean acidity reduces the ability to form shells and slowing down the growth of the most important species, like uh, muslis, clams, and oysters. And uh, of course, uh, the coral reef. And the coral reef is one of the keystone species. The keystone species meaning that each one species of the coral reef hosting or support the living of 350 other species. So the loss of one species of coral reef can destruct all the aquatic ecosystem along the uh, area affected with uh, the climate change. As a, uh, from the geologic distribution or geographic, distri geographic distribution, we can see the change, the global change in temperature. The global change in temperature, it changes the metabolic rates. It changes the metabolic rates in, micro, in uh, uh, biological or, uh, bodies or in all the living organisms. Since uh, 1980, the study of uh, a change in the metabolic rates uh, started. So if we are just looking to this figure and we see the Arctic uh, temperature, this black line, the Arctic temperature increase in the recent decades started more severe or more rapid increase followed by the northern temperate region. Also, it is a notable increase in temperature. And what is this meaning concerning the metabolic activity of these organisms? The metabolic activity of the living organisms increase consequently. So if we see just the uh, tropical species, the, the metabolic rate of tropical species increased very fast. And this is certain these uh, living organisms. As well, if we are dealing with another uh, group or another uh, phytogeographic region or uh, 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 living organisms in different phytogeographic region, we can see the southwest temperate, which is the, the green lion. The green lion, as you see, as the metabolic activity started to decline, decline, severe decline in a metabolic activity. Anyhow, the overall of this figure saying that, or outline that, the, uh, are the all the geographical regions, the temperature, uh, it, it changed from its normal or normal uh, 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 grades or normal level, normal status, above, uh, above or down the normal status, as well as it its impact on uh, metabolic activity on living organisms appear very huge, especially in tropical and in, uh, in uh, uh, south temperate organisms. All these changes threaten all the living organisms around the globe. It's not only in, uh, this effect is not only on land, but also in uh, sea and oceans. And the amount of arc Arctic sea, uh, ice in Arctic Sea uh, uh, during uh, 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 in 2015, the amount of ice measured in 2015 decreased in the, in the summer 2015, decreased about 700,000 square, mi 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 square miles if compared to its uh, uh, size in uh, uh, two, 2010. And this is a very huge amount of uh, ice mass disappeared from the uh, south, from the north or the moon. So what is this meaning? This is meaning that the ice melts. So a lot of it changes about the adequacy of uh, fresh water on uh, the sea. And uh, this is 
threaten the marine ecosystem. How? Because these living organisms or the living organisms in polar region must cope with extraordinary constraints. Among of these constraints, uh, the change in seasonal light intensity and the duration. So if the ice crust or the thickness of this ice crust or ice mass uh, become thinner or ice, this ice mass completely disappear, so uh, it changes the seasonal light intensity which penetrates down to the water, uh, down to the water level uh, uh, for uh, the other living organisms, even uh, uh, phytoplankton, uh, mollusks, uh, fishes, uh, uh, plants, and so on. So, so the light intensity uh, it changed as well as the light duration. Uh, the ice melt also uh, uh, respond uh, on uh, uh, or reflected as a fresh water percentage. So the percentage of fresh water become more than earlier uh, decades. It changes in temperature, of course, the density of water column. All these issues, uh, must the or, uh, uh, living organisms in polar region must cope with all these extremes. Among of the notable phenomena which observed recently in uh, this polar region is the appearance of massive phytoplankton bloom, which uh, uh, recently observed due to uh, the melting of uh, the ice sheet and the uh, sunlight penetrates to the down layer of water. So microorgan phytoplankton and started to uh, become photosensitic active, uh, increase the photosensitic activity and of course increase in its production and population. And all these issues will alter or will change the community and its impact on uh, uh, other living organisms will it change the whole ecosystem. Um, furthermore, uh, we, uh, we are dealing with the change in timing and shifting. What is the meaning of timing? As we see, the change in the time of uh, phenology in plant, for example. In the United States, uh, since uh, uh, 1990, up to up till uh, 2006, there is a study dealing with uh, the timing. So this study revealed the presence of many trees are now blooming earlier than did several decades ago. So this is concerning the timing. And if we are dealing with the shifting, the shifting, the, the study revealed that 40% of the wild plants and animals have been shifted its distribution range. So if we just see this map compared to the, the more recent map to the, at the end of the study, we can see the very black, blue, blue black color or this blue color indicating the cold tolerant species or cold adapted species. This cold adapted species in recent years shifted northward. It, the, the scientists said no, shifted poleward, shifted to the north. It migrates to the north. And this is followed by another species uh, as well. The heat tolerant species or the heat adapted species started also to migrate uh, uh, northward as the uh, temperature. Uh, distribution increased uh, north world or the pole world also the followed by uh, uh, shifting in uh, plants and animals which tolerate this heat or uh, heat tolerant out uh, uh, drought tolerant species uh, and this is meaning the shifting the shifting is the northern world migration of 40% of wild, wild plant and, and, and animals. Uh, and this is the case in the United States in uh, recent or in the early this century. The climate change also, the climate change also, it changed in the timing of the whole micro uh, living organisms or the whole biodiversity. If we just see this short, this short meaning the following. This short, uh, this short with a positive side and negative side. 
the negative soil indicating the earlier phenology, the change in timing, and it changed to earlier phenology, as, uh, meaning that the phenology of uh, such organism happened earlier than the normal. And the positive side meaning delay in phenology, the delay in phenology, uh, delay in phenology meaning the uh, phenology of this organism uh, happened delayed by days or by delayed than normal or uh, happened in extra days rather than its normal cases. So each each group of this color indicating a group of living organisms. Among of them, amphibians, the, the first group. The first group of amphibians, the amphibian, this uh, color, each, each line indicating a different species. So the group, most of the amphibians studied showed earlier phenology with, with more than months in, each, in, in some species. So we see that the amphibians is the more affected uh, species. Why amphibians are uh, showed more affect with climate effect with climate change? Because amphibians live in two ecosystems, water ecosystem and on land, inland ecosystem. So it, sh it should it should cope with two sets of extremes. The water extremes or the extremes or the extraordinary events or uh, issues happened in the water system and similar case in on land. So it uh, facing a double set of extremes or environmental extremes. Also a group of birds, uh, like uh, the group of birds also show some of the species uh, show with uh, uh, 25 days earlier in timing than the normal, and the rest of all species. But uh, before leaving this uh, uh, slide, I just memorize you with the food stuff. The food stuff is the herbs, grasses, and shrubs. The herbs and the grasses uh, and the shrubs is the black and uh, this color. This reason, uh, which is concerned with the food stuff, is delayed maximum for, uh, uh, sorry, uh, earlier phenology about 15 days maximum. So most of the edible uh, food uh, showed earlier timing about uh, 15 days. All this timing threats, uh, 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 of course, is uh, biodiversity. If, uh, if we are dealing with uh, examples of a group of uh, uh, another group of biodiversity, we can see the notable bird population change in USA and America and Canada through monitored through the last three decades. Through the last three decades, the population decline. The population decline severely. So if we trace this uh, or we mention some of these examples, the decline in the population, uh, 30, uh, 93 billion uh, per year, uh, 93 million per the per year declined in, in this uh, group of organisms like the throated sparrow and the red-winged uh, blackbird. So a huge amount of uh, individuals lost through these uh, three decades. And also through the, these three decades, 92 million of uh, birds in uh, the red wing uh, blackbird already disappeared. Uh, the, the snowbird also showed uh, down uh, in its population through these three decades with 168 million individuals. So this is a huge amount in population decline if we compare it to its normal status of breeding or uh, increasing in, in them. Uh, the, coastal, the coastal ecosystem uh, of shore uh, affected also with uh, uh, climate change. Uh, the study is carried out on mangrove because the mangrove, we see some importance of the mangrove on the coming slide. 
But if we see the, sea, the effect of sea level rise on sustainability of the mangrove. Under the low emission scenario, the low gas emission scenario, the sea level rise will rise from 3.4 up to 5 millimeter per year under the low emission uh, gas scenarios. What is the meaning of low emission gas scenarios? Meaning each country will take some uh, prevention or some uh, mitigation to decrease the amount of uh, greenhouse emission. If this is not happened and uh, we can see the high emission scenario. The high emission scenario, uh, meaning the countries cannot do, not doing anything to uh, monitor or to uh, uh, um, reduce the amount of greenhouse emissions. So the emissions, uh, uh, greenhouse emission increase. If it is increased under the high scenario, the sea level rise will be 10 millimeter per year. And what is this meaning for the mangrove uh, species? All the mod models or the theoretical models indicate 90% uh, of these models indicate that above 6.1 millimeter per year in sea level increase, uh, no uh, mangrove can sustain uh, forever. This is meaning that if we are just dealing with, uh, remember that 6.1 millimeter per year increase in sea level rise. This level already approaches because under the low scenarios, it reached 5 millimeter per year. If the sea level rise rate increase or exceed this figure, 6.1 millimeter per year, all the tropical coastal line in the uh, tropic, tropical region will affect it negatively through the coming uh, 30 years or through the coming three decades. Uh, this is the distribution, the map of distribution of the coral reefs around the world. And if we see this green line, this uh, green lines or bright, bright, uh, bright green lights indicates the distribution of mangrove uh, forest. These circles indicate the stations for measuring the sea level rise, where it's already approached, some areas already approached uh, 5 to 8 millimeter per year increase in sea level rise which may threaten all these ecosystems. And uh, concerning the uh, mangrove, mangrove in Egypt uh, or in the Red Sea, uh, there is a two species, uh, Rhizophora muricata and Avicenia marina. Why we are dealing with or we are interested in mangrove? Because the mangrove deliver services to the coastal ecosystem as a keystone species. Similar to the coral reef species in marine ecosystem. In the coastal ecosystem, another keystone species which is called uh, the mangrove. The mangrove is uh, among the mangrove surfaces to the ecosystem is providing food for microorganisms, crustaceous, mollusks, fishes, and so on. So on. It provides breeding ground for the fishes and other marine organisms like shrimps. Uh, provide nesting and breeding places for migratory birds as well as food. Play a role in water pyramidation. Protect the coastal line from erosion as well as stabilizing the coastal line. The mangrove protects the climate by absorbing the carbon dioxide. So if we lose if the temperature, the sea level rise, and these species or the mangrove species become uh, decline or deteriorated in the tropical region, all the coastal regions suffering from at least the fishing yield in the coastal area. So in addition to the similar surfaces to the, eco the ecosystem or the coastal ecosystem. 
The study, another example is a study carried out with Parmesan and Yale 2003 on uh, uh, 944 species. The impact of climate change on uh, 944 species. This study revealed an interesting issue. Uh, 87% of these species show with earlier timing, earlier timing in species phenology, as we described earlier. And 81% of these species extended, extended its distribution range forward, which is meaning our, uh, um, just it is the species shifting. The species distributes its range or expanded or it, it changes its, its the distribution range towards the pole. Generally, the cold adapted species decline and the warm adapted species increase. And this statement meaning that the increase in temperature and the cold adapted species cannot sustain or cannot survive uh, uh, accordingly or subsequently it, is, it declines. Recently, uh, I published a paper in uh, uh, Flora Mediterranean dealing with the vegetative uh, vegetation change during the last 100 years in Egyptian Mediterranean coast. This study revealed that uh, the vegetation cover, the vegetation cover in the Egyptian Mediterranean coast decline. Uh, each decline in each dynasty and diversity. The most interesting thing is the economic food, food and the food species or source species decline. Among of these families show with a notable decline in number and uh, uh, frequency of the species is the leguminosi, prasicisi, gramini, and these families are severely affected with the high temperature or the effect of uh, high temperature and low uh, rainfall or a shortage on rainfall. The cold adapted species decline. Some of them disappeared as the C3 species uh, like uh, El Elemus, uh, uh, Hordium spontanum, uh, and so on. The C4 species increased because the C4 is a species with a, a, a heat tolerance, more heat tolerant uh, than the C4. Um, some species saw with the notable increase or a, a remarkable increase, like the xerophytes and halophytes. Um, uh, the bone world shifting in geographical range also including some of the butterflies or some of the group of insects, uh, a group of insects like uh, uh, the speckled woody butterfly, the speckled woody but wood butterfly showed also bone world, bone world shifting. In England, uh, due from uh, 1940 up to 1969, which is showed with blue spots. This is the blue spots is the distribution of this butterfly at the time. Recently, this species shifted northward. And this shift is indicating that this species is a cold tolerant species, cannot adapt more or cannot live more in the southern part so with a temperature increase. So this is a diverse of effect on biological system or by a uh, group of biodiversity. How this changes affect exactly the global food stock or how the climate change affect the global food stock. During the Green Revolution or the Green Revolution technology started 1960 up to uh, 2015. This green, during the Green Revolution, the agricultural production of the globe increased three times, meaning 300%. However, this Green Revolution is not uh, uh, occurred in a similar on all the points all over the globe. So it occurs in uh, India, in uh, uh, China, 
and some parts uh, in uh, in Europe, in North America, uh, America and Canada, uh, some in South America and in Egypt. So the green revolution increased during this uh, range of time, or recently, or throughout the last six decades, increased three hundred percent. Is it enough for uh, providing food? No. The future projection of the food needs indicating that uh, 2030, the population will be 8.3 billion person. And this needs more food, 35% more food than our production to, uh, these days, our uh, uh, currently. By 2050, we need double the amount of food that the world produced, produced now. We need 100% more food. So, so now, what's our global food status? The global, the recent or the this day, the global food status, uh, status is estimated that when billion people are under nutrition. Under nutrition, one, one billion of persons under nutrition need more food quality or the best food quality or needs more food. To the end of uh, this year, or by the end of this year, 820 million hunger person will be uh, achieved. Why? Due to the effect of Corona and due to the effect of other issues like loss of their jobs and so and so. And this is this record from the Wall Street. This report from the Wall Street Journal yesterday. So we have uh, up till now nowadays. One billion people under uh, uh, nutrition or uh, under uh, nourishment, and to the end of the year we have 820 million of hunger. And this is our uh, this impact of the food demand. The food demand increased, of course, all over the globe, under all of the estimates, even high, medium, and low, and. In high, uh, in high estimate, the higher estimate saying that in 2100, we will reach 10 billion. The population all over the globe will reach 2 billion, which needs more and more food. And this is alarming the writers to, to write boxes about uh, uh, the silent tsunami and the end of sheep food and all these uh, uh, issues. Uh, the future food demand will increase more in Asia and Africa. Why it's, it's more increase or demand of the food in Asia and Africa? Because Asia and the, the population by the end of this century, the population in Asia and Africa is increased more than another uh, continent. Uh, how does this reflect on the demand of food all over the globe? The demand of food all over the globe, of course, uh, changed, and there is a pressure on the food demand. If we are dealing with a change in the crop production uh, with different treatments of climate change, in all the scenarios, we have two indications. The uh, blue markets indicating increase in uh, crop production, and the yellow and brown markets indicating decline or decrease in crop production. During the coming 10 years, um, the, the probability of increase 50-50 uh, with the probability of uh, food decrease. However, from uh, the uh, 2030 up to 2050, the uh, probability of uh, the food shortage or the food decrease appeared more and more uh, as we see. Some of these uh, uh, predictions stated that the uh, 
food will decrease up till 100% during the end of uh, by the end of this century so uh, we have a shortage in the current uh, food stock we have uh, demand exceeding in the future demand in addition the climate change will decrease the world food productivity it reached in some times decrease with in some uh, probabilities with 100 uh, percent sometimes or the most probable one it will decrease with 10 uh, percent um, and what is it, what is the most effective issues in climate change is it the greenhouse or the change in temperature or the change in precipitation uh, normal people or uh, uh, the non-field uh, people uh, blame the change, the temperature and the, the precipitation, the rainfall, the shortage of uh, in rainfall and uh, the increase in temperature in, in for the climate change and the shortage in food productivity. But the recent study says another word. If we are dealing just to this short. The, uh, the negative side, meaning uh, de decline in food production, and the positive side, meaning increase in food production. If we are dealing with, this is the total food production, uh, uh, this color indicating the forbes, which is the herbaceous uh, food plants, and the blue color indicating the annual or the pale yellow color, uh, pale, pale blue color indicating the annual grasses. Annual grasses including hordium, uh, maize, uh, barley, oat, avena, and so on. So, this is uh, called or termed as annual grasses. So, if we are just dealing with the precipitation and temperature, the precipitation not so with any decline in. Uh, uh, vegetation or uh, in, in in food production. However, the temperature show with little or uh, two percent or three percent in the food decline, especially in herbaceous flowering plant. But if you add another issue like the uh, carbon dioxide. The effect of carbon dioxide in food productivity reached minus 20%. So the, the effect of increase in carbon dioxide or in a global carbon dioxide concentration will decline the food productivity with 20%. And if you add temperature with carbon dioxide and nitrogen, we can, this ratio reached minus 25%. So our crop productivity will decline. Our crop productivity will decline uh, 25% if we cannot manage our productivity of green or uh, emissions of greenhouse uh, to the globe. Uh, also, butterflies, butterflies and uh, bees, which are the uh, uh, pollinators responsible for pollination of 75% of the world food crop. Unfortunately, more than 40% of these uh, uh, butterflies and bees subjected or facing extinction due to the climate change and due to the pollution, due to the pesticide and so on. Most affected land, is, as you see, is a colored arid region because a reduced region, as we just mentioned, it is more vulnerable. So the productivity, the productivity of 75% of the world food crops will decline with the decline of the insect or pollution. The droughts, the drought also will severely affect all the, the food productivity. The food productivity, the food productivity will lose its productivity by the drought as a major effect in sub-Saharan Africa and in Near East. The drought 
is more if is the more effective issue in these regions. However, the floods it will affect the production of uh, food crops in Asia and Latin America. Uh, however, the flow in this in this month in July. Uh, reporting that the food productivity, the cereal productivity in Africa increased 1.4% uh, than the uh, last year. Still, uh, 34 of the African countries showed shortage in the food production. So we have this year 35, 30, 34 countries will show with exceptional shortage, exceptional for shortage, meaning a severe shortage in food demand or the food stock or uh, uh, food requirement in Africa. This is based on different reasons, or this is the effect of different reasons, uh, different reasons. Among them, the high uh, food price, the floods, the desert locust, the rain deficit, and so on and so. All these are uh, climate change or climate change issue. If we are dealing with the crop productivity, the major for food productivity or over the globe, we have uh, the global maize production map. This map shows the, the area uh, producing uh, or cultivating maize. Uh, this is the uh, world map showing the sorghum production region. And this is the rice production region. If, we, if you please consider uh, this fact, these three crops are C4 species, meaning that this is a, a, a heat tolerant species or heat adapted species. All these three species or these three crops are heat tolerant species. Vice versa, the wheat is a C3 species meaning it is a cold tolerant species. Both of the cold tolerant and the drought tolerant in the coming years will be shifted northern, will be shifted poleward, will be shifted to the north. The most effective one will be the wheat production. So the wheat productive area will move to the north. So Egyptians and Indians, for example, predict this their land is not no more uh, producing wheat in the future because their climate is not adapted or not suitable for wheat production. And it will be more suitable for production of C4 species like maize, sorghum, and rice. What is this meaning? This I mean that the decision makers and uh, agricultural production sectors should reform their national strategy to reform the productivity or the agricultural activity to sustain or to secure their food demand or their food requirement to their people in the future year. Uh, because there is no more wheat can be cultivated in the old cultivated uh, wheat belt. And the wheat belt cultivation is become moved northward, followed by also by a distribution northward of uh, the, uh, the rice will be cultivated in more or distributed in northern more as well as sorghum and maize. Uh, it's not all C, it's not only the productivity or the productivity of wheat, but also the grain quality. If the temperature increase, the protein content of the wheat will decrease 80.8.6%. So the green quality of these crops will be affected. The high temperature increase, decrease the protein content of these grains with about 8%. It's not only uh, uh, the protein content, also the increase in carbon dioxide will decrease the mineral content uh, of some crops like 
uh, wheat, rice, and soya bean, with 8% also. So if the protein content increase uh, decrease with 8% due to temperature increase and increase uh, decrease in uh, mineral content with 8% due to the carbon dioxide decrease. Uh, so this is uh, a problem in uh, uh, food stuff as a quality and not only so a uh, lot of people will suffering from undernutrition or malnutrition. If we affect on just one item, example, uh, for the climate change and the crop productivity in Egypt, the heat and the sand waves. Just the, tem the some days showing uh, a high temperature and the sand waves during the March and April in uh, 2018 in Egypt. Showing, uh, uh, indicating the failure of fruiting in a lot of fruits and a lot of crops, among them, the potato, wheat, and, and mango decrease the, the productivity in these three crops, decreased with about 40% during the 2018. This is by the heat and the sand waves. While the olive productivity decreased with the 8%. Summer crops like cotton, corn, and rice is not affected. This example alert all the decision maker and scientists dealing with the food security. The drought also is African horn, which African horn is Eritrea, Ethiopia, Djibouti, and Somalia. This reason affect with drought with the multiple poor rainy season in two, uh, 2019 is the lowest cereal production in decades uh, in Somalia. And this is during this year's it uh, threatened 1.3 million of uh, people suffering from uh, food insecure. This is the effect of drought. So if it is rainy, but the rain become good and coming earlier. It, it will cause the uh, low-cost uh, problem. The low-cost outbreak in 2019 is due to the good early rain. It is rainy with a good amount, but it is earlier time than it was. This rain is it's already done on already happened along the Red Sea, both sides of the Red Sea. This is causing early breeding of the locust to continue. A lot of population and in severe increase in the locust population due to the early breeding uh, season of the locust continued due to the water availability. This, this extensive increase in desert locusts moved to Yemen and to Ethiopia and moved and moved and moved eastward to India and Pakistan. The, blob, the problem in 2019 or always the, blob, the problem of the locust is not just uh, damage the crops. It's a prevention in West, uh, in West and uh, Northern West Africa costing $3.3 million per year. And this is, this is a very huge amount of money. This year, the locust outbreak in India and Pakistan by the end of uh, May and last May and June, uh, this is indicated, uh, this, this was happened due to the presence or the coming of the locust herd, the locust herd comes six weeks earlier than normal. So this year, the locust comes six weeks earlier than the normal. It comes from Iran down to the Africa, which at that time, the rainfall not yet started in East Africa. Accordingly, this uh, uh, locust moved eastward to India. 
just the rain started this once in Africa, in East Africa, the locust back to Kenya, Somalia, and Ethiopia. And the locust these days in this region forming outbreak, it is the most dangerous outbreak of locust in Kenya, Somalia, and Ethiopia. It is the most dangerous locust outbreak happened through the 70 years ago. It's not only the locust, but also the evolution of several disease, plant disease like the evolution of new strain of wheat yellow rust, which adapted to high temperature. This yellow rust disease affects the wheat productivity in a very large area, including Near East, Central Asia, Australia, and America in the beginning of this century. <laughs> Also, the global warming uh, increased the disease like the virus disease in banana, the top disease virus in banana, expansion of cassava virus disease, as well as the wheat epidemic. Uh, it's not only the, uh, where the temperature increase and the, the organisms, uh, even plants and animals, moved to the poor world, also the crop business also move the whole world. Each year, the crop business moved the whole world in a distant amount as 2.7 kilo per year northward. So, uh, uh, agriculture sector should expect that the crop, their crops will be affected in the future with the business which is now currently infect the countries in the South region. So this business will move in the future to the whole world. So it will affect the Northern position or the Northern country or the crops cultivated in the Northern countries. The outbreaks and expansion of uh, this crop business affect uh, one example is affected the leaf frost in Central America and causing uh, the coffee uh, leaf frost a huge disease. It's not only, but also another example will show with the threats to the cultivated crops and the food productivity like uh, the palm, like uh, the palm red weevil and the olive fruit, uh, the white flies, and the phytophthora in potato, uh, all these uh, uh, diseases now show with expansion in each distribution range and show with a very serious outbreak in uh, Arab region. And this global, this global spread of crop beasts and pathogen costs the global the crop production or decrease the global production with up to 40% per year. So the business and pathogen will decrease the crop, the global food productivity up to 40% by year. And this global best costing the world economy $220 billion per year. While also invasive insect will costing the global economy with $70 billion per year. So, uh, we, 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 we need now uh, uh, more crops. The climate change will affect the food productivity as well as the population increase. Uh, the, also the uh, loss of crop productivity due to increase in best distribution and severity. This is also for the food, uh, the seafood will also affect the, the uh, uh, global change or the climatic change will affect also the productivity of the sea or the aquatic organisms. The seafood protein uh, support one million, one billion people worldwide. Uh, the recent study carried out on the rocky shore of Central California 
So with that, the southern species become more common and abundant, while the northern species decreased. This is meaning that the aquatic organisms also showing northern shift, or similar to the birds and mammals and plants, also the marine organisms and this all the uh, living organisms in aquatic uh, 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 ecosystem also show with the uh, pole world shifting. Generally, uh, also the um, the fish which the hatching in fresh water, the fresh water species in uh, 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 in land fish fresh water species will it change it. The hatching ability will it change or the hatching product productivity or yield will it change it in temperate. Uh, in the, in the change in temperature and rainfall will it change the distribution and the catch of inland fish species. In tropical countries, the fish or the marine catch will decline 40%. In high altitude water, the marine catch will increase due to the distribution or the migration to the uh, north pole. And this is what is the meaning of all this three. Is it still we have weaknesses? We have weaknesses, we have needs, and we have opportunity to resolve all this issue. Among of our weaknesses is the high food demand, increase in global price, uh, the food by 2050. The high food price could reduce the vulnerable people to access to the food, increase the hunger and the malnutrition. Uh, reduce the climate change will reduce the earring of producers in a small scale farmers and will uh, 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 and all this issue however all these weaknesses we have also needs we need to adopt we need adoption of global vision for utilization of wild and untapped food for and the fodder species we need also implementation of global breeding and enhancement program for food alternatives. We need to reform our national strategies to secure the national food supply for our people. Uh, we have opportunity? Yes, we have, of course, opportunity. We have the global biodiversity stock, which containing million of species, among of them thousands of species as a crop alternative and uh, untapped food species. We can explore them. We, ha we have local traditions uh, dealing with the consumption of such food. We have local varieties of food and recipes can adapt it to uh, our future, can subject it to our future food program or enhancement program. Uh, we have wild species, of course, it's still like uh, Hortium leporinum, it's still in wild, we can domesticate. We have uh, C4 species like sorghum, we can multiply, it is a, a, a heat adapted species. All this effort should be expressed to uh, achieve the sustainable development goals 2030, which is dealing with uh, uh, zero hunger and combat poverty. And this is the main uh, issues in uh, the global uh, sustainable development goals up till uh, 2030. Thank you for uh, uh, listening. Uh, thank you, and I am waiting for any question. Thank you, ma'am. That was a very uh, insightful talk you gave us for now. Uh, actually, it is a need of an hour. Uh, so we have a few questions here, ma'am. So would you like Let's to take go, it? Go on. Yeah. So many of the people, the participants, uh, there were more than 100 questions and uh, almost uh, uh, there's uh, many questions they have raised is, is uh, genetically modified crops yes. is the future of food security? Uh, uh, I can understand in just one word, no at all, because the uh, genetically modified organisms cannot sustain with the climate change. It is not at all adapted to the climate change. Okay. And uh, what is the possible solution to feed the growing population? Uh, 
just to manage uh, the family population uh, and the family uh, number where it's no more if each, each family just uh, keep their population to uh, um, two, three, four, just all. There is no, the, 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 the food demand in the food demand of the world increase and the amount of the production decrease by two issue by demand, by the insects, insect, by climate change. So there is two ways, no more, to improve our uh, uh, utilization of new crops and wild crop relatives and the use of the untapped uh, or local varieties to increase our food basket, to increase the number of uh, crops in our food basket. In addition to decrease our population or just manage our population increase. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And uh, there is one question. So how climate change influence the rise of uh, many pathogens uh, such as this corona or uh, other uh, epidemic pathogens? So uh, 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 if we are dealing with the rice crops, uh, no, ma'am. It's the general. I can't hear. I can't hear well. Okay. So, how the climate change influence the rise of? Uh, I mean, uh, the increase in pathogens. What is the relationship between the climate change and pathogens? Oh, the, the climate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The relationship. There is a, a direct relationship in in in, in two issues. Because the pathogens, the pathogens have the ability, a great ability to uh, reform itself and they produce mutant more faster than the higher population or the higher, the, the higher crops and the higher plant and animals. So the mutant in fungi, bacteria and viruses is more, is more frequently and more uh, uh, rapid. So, the, productive, the production of a huge pathogen due to the high, the pressure of high temperature due to the climate change will more probably happen than the wheat yellow rust. This is an example because annually the, the high temperature or the temperature increase in, induce mutation in fungus, so it becomes more drastic than earlier. In addition, in addition to that, the Sustainability of crops become very high to, to the pathogen become very high with the increase in temperature because the increase in temperature increase the metabolic rate and decreases the life cycle of the plant and decrease its immunity. So if the, the immunity of the of the plant is decreased and the pathogen severity increase. So we have a huge threats of pathogens. Okay. okay, thank you. So there is a, another question. Go is on. climate change and biodiversity loss inevitable? Inevitable? Yes, ma'am. Unstoppable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you meaning some uh, uh, scientists is saying uh, saying that it's okay, and others saying that it's not okay. It's not happened. Islam, yeah. No, uh, the fact is, I explored to you through the literatures, uh, the early part of this literature and the last literature uh, given uh, in uh, Shedden Bram College. We have a lot of issues uh, uh, and a lot of measures like the, me the NASA measurements of the amount of uh, ice in the northern pole melts. Uh, and the amount, the decrease in uh, temperature and the movement of birds, the change of the lacust uh, uh, way or migration way, uh, as you see in India uh, this year, uh, it's not uh, um, the amount, of the heavy rainfall uh, in India last uh, of rainfall in uh, Arab region, in Jordan, in Saudi Arabia, in, uh, in uh, this region, uh, in regions not uh, suffered from a huge or a heavy amount of rain earlier. This is an extraordinary event. If we just mention that the amount of uh, burned forest in tropical area in Amazon forest started not yet, not yet uh, turned off. 
due to the high temperature and the shortage of rainfall. During our education, uh, early education year, we learned that the tropical region is uh, uh, rainy all the year with high temperature. This rain started to be shortened and decrease accordingly the, temperature, the high temperature in the US fires and the Amazon fire forest is spread all over a very huge area recently. So, this is, this, so no debates now, res, now nowadays, uh, there is no debate at all in climate change and effects on biodiversity because it is a measurable issue. So it is not a just a theoretical thinking mood. It becomes a, a, a measurable issue in different disciplines and its impact already become measurable in different disciplines concerning disease, uh, human life, uh, uh, activities, uh, migrations, uh, uh, shifting, and so on. So, Thank you. Uh, and is human activity is the only thing to blame for the current climatic change? Um, I guess it is not only the blame, but it is the major one. Because the human activity is responsible for two uh, uh, issues. is the carbon dioxide production. And during my lecture, I explained the effect of carbon dioxide increase on the food productivity. Just the carbon dioxide de uh, increase, decrease the crop productivity with 20%. So this is the major issue. And if you add the carbon dioxide to the nitrogen gas and to uh, a temperature and something like that, the shortage on food productivity become more. So the, answer, the anthropogenic factor is the major threat. However, there is a natural threat. And the anthropogenic factor blamed for the acceleration, the recent acceleration in climate change. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so one uh, uh, interesting question, ma'am. So yes, is, so please. Uh, is global warming is going to create a new uh, ecosystem globally, and will it accelerate the evolution of newer species? Um, um, I I guess maybe, but but. But the emergence of new species and the evolution, as we studied earlier in uh, uh, biodiversity and uh, ecology and so on, it, it can sustain for thousands of years. Okay. There is no, 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 no new species will emerge tomorrow because the temperature rises. No, 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 not at all. It takes thousands of years. So our coming generation uh, in the future, thousand year, uh, we will we will find uh, new okay. species. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you, and uh, thank you thank so you. much for your uh, patient answering of these questions. And uh, yes, we'll come anytime. Thank you. So thankfulness is the culmination of a very noble thing that emerges from a humble God. So I now. Uh, call upon the organizing secretary, uh, Dr. M. Francis Satisila, to uh, deliver the vote of thanks. So, please. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Janikuma. Uh, since the webinar comes to a close, I am very much pleased and it is my privilege to propose the vote of thanks on this occasion. First and foremost, I thank Almighty God for showering His abundance, graces, and bounteous blessings on us and making this occasion a precious one. I take I thank, I take this opportunity to express my sincere thanks to Reverend Father Rector, Reverend Father Secretary, and Reverend Father Principal for his felicitation, blessing, and encouragement support for this webinar. I express my deep sense of gratitude to our respected resource person, Dr. Bafa M. Amir, for your gracious presence by sparing the valuable time and delivering the inspirational talk. Uh, and since ma'am is a member of IUCN, she's more concerned about the climate change, how it has more impact on the ecosystem, biodiversity, and food security. Ma'am, your intellectual talk has brought us a knowledge for reduction in deforestation and go for reforestation, a tool for carbon sequestration and carbon banking. 
Thank you very thank much, you, Dr. Francis. Thank you, Dr. Francis. Thank you for hosting me. Thank you for the Dean of St. Joseph uh, uh, College. Thank you for your colleagues. Thank you for the head of the public department and uh, the Zoom organizer, as well as the, the, the YouTube uh, uh, specialist. Thank you for hosting me. Hopefully see you uh, to, uh, in the coming future. Thank you. Thank, and thank you so much. Thank you. I thank Dr. Krishna Soares of EOC College for introducing me to a resource person who was helping me from Alpha to Omega for this webinar. With you, ma'am, only this webinar became a successful one. I thank Dr. Sagai Satish, Dean School of Biological Science, for his encouragement and support. I thank Dr. Sindhil Kumar, the head, for his valuable welcome address for this webinar. I thank Dr. Jani Kumar Tago for presenting a very meticulous mass of ceremony. My heartfelt thanks and sincere thanks goes to Dr. Kanikaraj for the coordination and the technical support in e-communication to connect this webinar very smoothly. Because of you only, sir, this event became a very successful one. Thank you so much, sir. I thank Karthik and Erika and my students who are helping me in all the ways for this webinar by providing link, feedback, flyer, and e-certificate. Thank you, my dear students. My special thanks goes to my fellow professor and all the participants of my country and other nations for your active participation in this webinar. Once again, I thank you all. Thank you. Thank you and bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.